This project is a getting started guide for the Quick Feather board from Quick Logic. Now this also ties in with a contest that Hackster is running called Challenge Climate Change, which involves using AI at the edge to tackle some of the world's most important problems at the moment. So getting into a couple of the specifications for the board, it has a Quick Logic EOS S3 processor which is the very first FPGA-enabled ARM Cortex M4F microcontroller that is also fully supported by Zephyr OS. And externally, it has 16 megabits of flash memory. It has an M-Cube MC3635 accelerometer, which we will be using in this project to gather data from it and then also use it to classify incoming data. You also need, in addition to the Quick Feather, this, which is a basic USB to TTL serial converter. Now, you'll need to use this because the Simple Stream firmware by default will use the UART pins on the Quick Feather instead of the USB interface. So, let's go ahead and connect this up to a computer and get started. So, before we can start capturing data with the Data Capture Lab, we need to first flash the Quick Feather with the latest firmware. The firmware can be downloaded from a link that's included within the project, and you also need to use Git Clone to download the GitHub repository for this project. So once you've gone ahead and cloned it into a folder, move that binary into that folder as well. So whenever I list it, it should come up like this. So our bi binary is this quickfeather simple stream data collection bin file. Now I've also gone ahead and installed the Python package. I will go ahead and plug in my quickfeather. And once I press reset, I'll have five seconds to click user. And now it's in program mode. So my quick feather is currently connected to COM port 3 and yours will probably differ or if you're on a Linux based system it will definitely be different. So go ahead and run that. Okay and now it's been written. So to finalize it we'll go ahead and press reset again. And we're back to that blinking blue light and that will go away. So now our quick feather is programmed. Let's go ahead and move into the data capture lab now. So now we're inside the Sensomil Data Capture Lab program. This will allow us to, of course, capture data from the Quick Feather and then transfer that to the cloud. Let's go ahead and create a new project. I'll just call this one Example Project. And then go and save that. Now right now we're in Label Explorer. So if I go up to here, you can see I haven't captured any data yet. So we'll need to go and switch that mode over to Capture. And now that we're in Capture mode, to go and add a new sensor because right now it's empty and there's also a plugin you can download or you have to download in the form of an ssf file that's also linked in the project so save it then go up here and go to edit and then import device plugin and add it now go and select the simple stream custom plugin click next now there's only a built-in accelerometer on there that's enabled so we'll do that 105 samples per second and then make sure to select the accelerometer. I'll just call it sensor one. It can be anything you want. And live stream capture and then serial port. Okay, so now we'll go and unplug it temporarily from the USB port and then plug in my CP2102 USB to TTL serial converter. Now you can also use like an FTDI, CH340G, and there will be a little schematic on the project to tell you where to plug it in. And I've also gone ahead and plugged in my quick feather. We can go ahead and find that device. Comes up on COM4, so we're going to connect to it. And we can also add our labels. So for this project, we'll just do, I don't know, I guess two labels. So we can do like a rest and then a moving one. So we'll call this one rest. And then we'll call this one movement. Okay. So current label will just be rest. And for this one, all we have to do is let it stay still. Get that. We don't need to add any metadata to it. I guess if we wanted to add a class, we could. So the class will basically differentiate between testing and training data for this example. So make sure that this, that's a drop down. Add two different values for it. So we'll call this one train. Call this one test. Now testing is really important is it allows you to evaluate the model with different data than it was trained on. Okay, so now you can see that we are connected. And if I gently rock my table, you can see that the accelerometer 
we'll give some feedback. So for this first one, we'll just let it stay still. So we'll have all of these uh, accelerometer axes selected and we'll begin recording. Okay, so right now it's going ahead and saving that data into a CSV file. So now if I come up here, you can see that that file's here. Now I also want to get rid of all of these large spikes. So what I can do is hold down right click at the beginning and drag all the way up until the data I want. So segments allow you to go and fine tune the data and only get the parts that you want while discarding the parts that you don't want. Let's have those all saved. I'm going up to save changes. Okay, so now we're back in capture mode. I've reconnected with the feather. So now we're going to go ahead and change our label to movement. So this one will begin recording and then we'll just move quick feather around a bit in each axis and kind of build up a bit of a repository of data to go from so we can split it up into segments. Okay, so around 40 seconds should be enough. Okay, and now back in the file viewer mode, we can see that we have you know, a lot more movement in this data set. So again, we're going to go ahead and segment everything. We can zoom in and kind of see the spikes and the activity. I'm going to get rid of all these extremes as well. And the tiny amount of inactivity at the end. So cut it off right about there. We also need to change the labels and all of these. So we'll put that to movement. And then we can go and save those changes and train a model. Now this is the cloud-based Sensimil Analytics Studio. So whenever you create your new project with the Data Capture Lab, it automatically stores the project in the cloud along with any data that you generate, which is really nice because it can automatically synchronize between the two. You can see here that we have our example project. We have the two files, so we have the two training ones. And we'll go ahead and open up that project. You can see here we have our events, the size of it, they're both for training. So now we're going to go and create a query and then a pipeline. And that's how you prepare the data and build the model. So when we go to here, we'll just enter in a sample query. So we can call this one, say, example query, uh, session one, uh, just label with label. Uh, metadata will include the class and then no filter on that. And then we can plot our samples. So now you can see that we have movement and then rest. So we can go and add that. So now with the pipeline, we can go ahead and add a new pipeline. We can also just call this one example pipeline. We'll add that. Select our example query. Our window size will be the same as our sample rate. We'll use automatic windowing. So now accuracy measures you know, how close it got to the actual thing, whereas F1 score is kind of between accuracy and also sensitivity. So we'll choose that. And then classifier size is the maximum size of the model in bytes that will go into the microcontroller. Now this is really useful because if you have a really large model, then you can limit how large it can get and therefore keep it an appropriate size for the microcontroller. Now under here, we have really advanced settings. Uh, most people probably don't need to use these uh, just for really basic things, but you can always come in here and tune it uh, to meet what you need. So now we'll go and click on optimize. And what this will do is it'll take in all the parameters, take in the data, and then build the model with the pipeline you selected. So we'll go and let that do its thing and then come back once it's completed. And now that it's done, we can go and see the results of it. Because it's such a simple model with only two different labels, and both of them are quite different. You know, we get 100% accuracy for everything pretty easy. If we want to get more information about the model, we can visualize some interesting features about it. We can see the confusion matrix, which is the predicted value versus the ground truth of the data. So it does pretty well with that. You can see feature summary, model summary, and then knowledge pack summary. Now a knowledge pack is basically the firmware or library or source code that gets generated from the model. So then if you were to take this model and then we can export it and go and select here our quick feather. We'll target free RTOS. 
and then we can either have a binary, library, or source. For now, we'll just select the binary so we can flash it immediately, but if you wanted to incorporate it into another project, you can always choose library or just source code and build everything yourself. It will be sensor 1, because we just use the accelerometer, and then we'll just do simple streaming. We're not interested in MQTT for this. So now we can go and download that, and it's going through, it's compiling the code, and then we'll get to download the resulting binary from that. So now that we have our downloaded and now extracted knowledge pack in the form of a binary file, it's time to go and flash it and then see the results. So right here, I have the quick feather. So same procedure as last time. Plug it in, press the reset button, and then user button, which will put into program mode. So now that we're in program mode, we can go and run the command to flash it. So this time I've replaced the default firmware for simple streaming with the custom one that I downloaded. Yours will probably have a different name. So it looks like it found the quick feather. Now we just wait for it to start uploading. And there we go, success. We'll go ahead and press reset one last time. And now it is running the custom firmware. So I have TerraTerm loaded up. We're going to open that and let's see the results of it. Now with the CP2102 connected, we can now see the output from the UART pins. So remember, we had the two labels. So we had stationary or rest, and then we had movement. Now you can see here under classification, we have two. And that tells us you know, that's what the result is. So if I were to move it a bunch, then that changes the classification over to one, as you can see right here, which means that it's correctly picking it up. And now that it's back at rest, it is only at two. So with this in mind, you can go ahead and create all kinds of projects that can recognize stuff. There are a couple example projects, for example, you know, detecting more advanced gestures, uh, fan control, ensuring that motors uh, get maintenance before they actually go bad, you know, all kinds of stuff. If AI at the Edge interests you, you, know, you should really try to check out Haxter's current contest with QuickLogic and Sensimil. It's about tackling climate change using AI at the edge with the Quick Feather and Sensimil technology. All the details for this project will be listed and documented in thorough detail inside the Hackster project. They'll be linked inside the description of this video. Now feel free, go out, read extra documentation, and also stay tuned for possibly more videos and projects about this.